Hello, fifth graders. It's Mrs. Correa with you again. I am here today with your sixth grade student orientation. I made a video for your parents as well. There's one in English and one in Spanish with the same information that I shared with you a couple of weeks ago. When you get a copy of this video, you'll also get a copy of all of the slides. So you'll be able to click through them slowly at your convenience and go over any information that interests you. Most of this information has been put together by your teachers that you'll have next year. The first group of teachers that put together a video for you are your pathway teachers. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, you chose one of these classes to take next year as an exploratory class. Your second exploratory class is this pathway, and it's your career cruising teacher, your digital literacy teacher, and the two teachers that teach discovering art are also in the video explaining some things to you. So here they are. Hi, future Chargers. I'm Mrs. White, and I teach career cruising. Hello, Chargers. I'm Mrs. Rooney, and I teach discovering art. Hi, guys. My name is Miss Nagler, and I also teach discovering art. Hi, future Chargers. I'm Mrs. Knoll, and I teach digital literacy. We are pathway teachers in the exploratory department at Lima Middle School. What that means is that you will have art, career cruising, and digital literacy your sixth grade year. You're so lucky. Each class will be one trimester long, which is equal to 12 weeks. In career cruising, we're going to learn more about our own interests and explore jobs that fit those interests. We will pursue many art mediums in discovering art, and you will have either myself or Miss Mangler. I look so forward to meeting you and creating with you in the art room this fall. I hope you guys are ready to get your hands dirty and create some amazing masterpieces. I can't wait to meet you. In digital literacy, we do lots of fun projects to build your computer skills that you'll be able to use immediately in your other classes and in everyday life. Stay tuned to learn more about each of your pathway classes at the sixth grade camp coming this summer. We can't wait to meet all of you. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. See you soon. Right, so those are your pathway teachers. You will meet them next year. The next group of teachers that we have for you are the instructional coaches. We have six instructional coaches. They are listed down here for you. They put together a video for you explaining our Lima Middle School values. The voiceover in the video is Miss Quintana, and here she is. Hello, future Chargers. Welcome to Lehman Middle School. Our Lehman values. Our five school values drive our community of learners to success. They allow us to feel safe, nurtured, and welcome at school. All teachers and students are committed to following our values. These are our five Lehman School values with examples of what they look like, sound like, and feel like. We will break these down in the following slides. Respect for others. Lehman Middle School is a building full of students and teachers who communicate differently and see the world in different ways. Respect at Lehman is an important value because it allows everyone to work together safely and productively. Some examples are accepting directions, using polite words, having a feeling of belonging, caring for our building, and a positive speaking tone. Readiness to learn. Being ready to learn is an important way to help everyone feel safe and comfortable in their learning environment. When we are prepared, we have more control of ourselves and our future because we can face tasks calmly and effectively. Examples are being on time, engaged discussions, feeling of accomplishment, having all materials, and being focused. Orderly transitions. Lehman Middle School is a very large building with a lot of people who need to move around and through it. We want all of our students to feel safe in their environment. So we have set expectations for orderly transitions to help everyone get where they need to be as quickly and safely as possible. Examples are respecting your physical space, appropriate voice levels, feeling calm, walking on the right side of the hallway, and staying in your expected area. 
positive interactions. Positive interactions between everyone at Lima Middle School makes it a safe and inviting place to spend our day. It would be nearly impossible to live our lives without conflict, but when we remember that we have common ground with our peers, it is likely that we can resolve conflict in a positive way. Examples are compliments, please and thank yous, being a part of a team, demonstrating patience, and greeting others. Responsibility. Being responsible means that we are accountable for the care of someone or something. In all areas of life, we have responsibilities. We might be responsible for taking care of a sibling or mowing a lawn. At Lima Middle School, we have responsibilities as well. Some examples are meeting deadlines, asking how can I improve, having ownership, seeking help when needed, and saying I will try better next time. Our Lehman community. Education is for improving lives by leaving your community and world better than you found it. Whether you come from Courier, Wagner, Turner, Gary, Indian Knoll, or Pioneer, we are all Lehman Chargers. Being a part of the Lehman family means saying hello and greeting others, respecting school property that we all share, doing the right thing even when no one is watching, joining after school activities that interest you, and supporting the West Chicago community. We are a laughter sharing, mistake making, independence building, brain stretching sort of place where everyone matters. Behavioral expectations. Always treat everyone with respect. How you treat others will be how they treat you. We look for appropriate voice volumes, keeping hands and feet to ourselves, positive participation, taking turns when speaking, having ownership of yourself and your work, accepting others, and always putting forth your best effort. We can't wait to see you in the fall. All right, those are our instructional coaches. And our next group of teachers then that we have that would like to speak to you are the language arts teachers. These are the teachers that will be teaching reading and writing next year using ARC. And here they are. Hello, future chargers. We are so excited to have you as part of the Lehman family. We are your sixth grade ELA teachers, and you will most likely have one of us as your teacher next year. We want to share some tips for the middle school by sharing positive interactions and being ready to learn. What do those look like to you, Mrs. Rivera? Positive interactions to me, making sure we're greeting everybody, that we're saying hello, goodbye at the end of class, when you enter and with your friends in the hallway, it's also important to know what's an appropriate way physically to say hi. High fives, fist bumps. We try to keep our hands to ourselves otherwise, so not hugging or running and jumping on people. Also, have a smile as you walk around the building. What are tips that you have, Mr. Villa? Well, one of the uh, Lehman values that we have is readiness to learn. And with that, we wanna make sure that we come to class with all of our materials. Um, one of the things that you'll notice that is different from elementary to middle school is that instead of putting your things and materials inside of your desk, you'll be putting all those inside of your locker. So you want to make sure that you start getting organized right from the beginning so that you are able to bring everything to all the classes that you need and you are ready to learn. How about you, Mr. Klein? What's a tip that you have for our sixth grade chargers? One of the best things to be ready to learn is to be on time for class. You'll have four minutes to get from one classroom to another, so you'll have plenty of time. But in the, especially in the beginning of the year, you will get lost, and it's okay if you're going to get lost. It's a big building. So don't be afraid to ask any adult or any teacher that's in the hallway. They're there to help you. If you get nervous during the during the school day, especially in the beginning of the year, make sure that you talk to one, one of your teachers who can uh, answer any of your questions, or if you need a social worker or a counselor, we can we can track one down for you to make you feel better. 
And if you have any problems, again, come talk to a teacher. What about you, Mrs. Ayala? Hi, I'm Mrs. Ayala. We're so excited to meet you soon. And um, one of the things that we want you to do is to always put forward your best effort. So, um, quiero que traten lo mejor que puedan. We are so happy to welcome you to Lehman Middle School. What about you, Mr. Banfi? Thanks, Ms. Ayala. Uh, Chargers, interacting positively is super important. What that means to me is to be kind and patient with others, to help them whenever you can, to share a compliment with them when they did something good. And as Ms. Rivera was saying, smile, try to smile. So what about you, Ms. Atkinson? Do you have any words to share? Well, I just want to say that right now you might be wondering what school is going to look like in the fall. And as teachers, we're wondering that too. We're just trying to figure things out on a day-to-day -day basis. But what we really want you to know and remember is that we are so excited to meet you. And we hope that you're excited to be at Lehman too. We can't wait to see your faces and your big smiles when we finally get to meet. And we hope again that you're as excited as we are. Bye, Chargers. See you soon. Bye. Right, so those are your language arts teachers. Let's see who's next here. I believe it's social studies. So social studies has a video for you. This is Mrs. Smith, Mr. Hernandez, and Ms. Garcia that put this video together for you on responsibility. I write one book, maybe I can write two books, then three books, then four books. Listen to me, there ain't nothing you can't do. You handle your business, money will come and chase you, but you gotta be the best person you can be so that you can even be trusted with money and wealth. Truth be told, I shouldn't even be here. It's, and I'm gonna be honest with you, like, it scarred me. I, I had issues with that, because I'm like, yo, we're, like, like, what's wrong with me for you don't wanna be here? So I felt like, I'm gonna be honest with you, I felt like I was a mistake. I wasn't valuing education. You know what I'm saying? Like I value the streets. I value being a class clown. I value women. I wasn't valuing like school. I wasn't trying to be no scholar. I was trying to get money. I was trying to kick it. I was trying to get a few laughs. Life spiraling out of control. Got to a point I said, you know what? I got to grow up. I need to grow up because I'm on some little boy stuff. I should be making my mom proud. I should be making her smile. I should be giving her joy as opposed to giving her pain, giving her a hard time. When I was like, yo, whatever I gotta do on character, I ain't blaming nobody else. Listen to me, I took back my power. For years I was blaming folks, but if he was in my life, if this teacher wouldn't give me a hard time, they always on my back, it was his fault. I, I stopped blaming people. Because when you blame people, you give them your power. I took my power back. I took complete ownership. I said, nope, this is all on me. I made the mistake, I'll make the adjustments. It's all on me. I promise you a shift started taking place, right? And so I end up, it's the craziest thing. I end up catching back, I end up catching up with my right grade. I had to take summer school, I had to like night courses. So when all my other friends was kicking it, that was hard. I was like, yo, I wanna go kick it, but let me, let me make the main thing the main thing, cause I'm tired of seeing my mama cry. Like I'm tired of living here. Like I want better, I want more for my life. So I recognize I gotta make some adjustments. I start making the adjustments. So I was just like, yo, everybody who talked negative about me, I'm about to show them they was wrong about me. And everybody who believed in me, I'm about to prove them right. And I'm about to have my mom crying for the rest of her life. She's so doggone proud of me. So did high school, boom. Did college. I said, shoot, if I can do college, maybe I can get my master's. I'm like, why not? Why not push the limit? Why not be a next level student? Why not try to get the absolute best out of me I can get? So I said, well, shoot, I'm going ahead, go ahead and uh, I'm gonna do grad school. Went to grad school, got the master's. Now I'm like, shoot, if I had to get my master's, I had to write a whole bunch of books, uh, papers, and read a whole bunch of books. I'm like, well, shoot, maybe I could write a book. But my first book in 2010, I've been writing a book every year. I just finished my seventh book called Next Level Teaching. I never thought I'd be traveling the country. I never thought I'd be traveling the world. So I want to challenge y'all real quick. Like, ask yourself right now, all eyes on me. Like, ask yourself, what kind of life you want to live? Like where you want to be in the future. 
Here are your sixth grade math teachers with CHAMP's expectations for different areas in Lehman Middle School. Good morning, incoming sixth graders. I'm Mrs. Taylor, one of the sixth grade math teachers that you'll see around the hallways next year at Lehman Middle School. I wanted to explain to you today a behavior program that we use at the middle school called CHAMPS. In CHAMPS, each letter stands for a different expectation that your teachers will have for you. All of the teachers at the middle school will use CHAMPS to explain the expectations for an activity. So I'm going to explain each letter to you. The C in CHAMP stands for conversation level, and I'll talk more about that in just a minute, but that tells you how loud or how quiet you need to be during an activity. The H in CHAMP stands for help, which is how you will know what you need to do if you need help with an activity. The A stands for activity, and this is where the teachers will actually explain to you what the activity that you are doing is. M stands for movement, which explains how you can move around the classroom or whether you need to stay in your seat during an activity. The P in CHAMP stands for participation, and that's how the teachers will explain to you what they expect to see to show that you are participating and engaged in your learning. And the S in CHAMP stands for success, and this is how everyone will know that you have successfully completed the activity that your teacher explained to you. Okay, I told you I would go back to the conversation level, so I want to show you this screen here. These are the volume levels that you will hear teachers talking about all the time. If you are expected to be quiet, the teachers will ask you to be at voice level zero. Voice level one is like a whisper so that maybe your partner can hear you, but you won't be interrupting or disrupting other people's learning. Voice level two is just a normal conversation. This is what you're going to be using if you're talking at a group, okay, in the cafeteria or in your classroom, okay? Uh, voice level three is if you're in a large crowd and you're expected to be a little bit louder. And voice level four is only used in an emergency situation because it's too loud and will disrupt other people's learning if you use it at a regular basis. Okay, throughout the rest of this video, you'll see some other sixth grade math teachers talking with you about the CHAMPS expectations for different places in the school, like the cafeteria and the bathrooms and the hallways, because we have CHAMPS expectations for all of the common areas and CHAMPS expectations for every classroom at the middle school. So that's CHAMPS. I can't wait to meet you guys next year. I hope you have a great summer and stay safe and healthy. Hi, incoming sixth graders. My name is Miss Montgomery and I'm one of the sixth grade math teachers here at Lehman. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about CHAMPS in the hallway. Right now, it is very important that we follow all of our hallway rules with everything going on. C is for conversation. That means you can have a voice level two or a small group volume. We need to use inside voices and make sure that only the people around us are hearing our conversation, not the entire hallway. H is for help. If you need help, you need to ask a supervising um, teacher for help. That could be any of the student supervisors or any teachers you see in the hallway. Activity, we need to make sure that while in the hallway, we only have three minutes to go from class to class. So we need to be moving to our next class at a pretty good rate. You don't wanna be late to class. Movement, we are walking in the hallway. We're not touching other people, we're not running, we're not shoving anyone. You're keeping your hands to yourself and going from one class to the next quickly. Participation. We need to make sure that we're keeping our hands and our feet to ourselves. We are not going to be high-fiving people in the hallway or giving hugs. We need to make sure that we are keeping all of our hands, feet, and objects to ourselves and that we are not interfering with anyone else making, making it to class on time. And then success. We need to make sure we safely make it to class on time and we're getting from one part of the building to the next without interfering with anyone else getting to class on time. Bye incoming sixth graders, can't wait to see you guys soon.
Hi everybody, my name is Mrs. Rushmeyer and I'm one of the math teachers at Lehman Middle School. I'm so excited to meet you fifth grade students. It's going to be a great year. I'm here today to teach you about the champ's expectations in the bathroom. So if you look here at my poster, I'm going to go through each of the expectations. So the C in CHAMPS stands for conversation. So your voice level in the bathroom is between a zero and one. You only want one other student to be able to hear you. There's no need to yell in the bathroom, gross. It's a dirty place. If you need help, ask your nearest person. That could be a student or a teacher, totally up to you. The activity is using the bathroom. Make sure that you put your supplies on the shelf and always, always, always wash your hands. The movement is going to be walking in and out of the bathroom and you want to exit as soon as you wash your hands. You don't want to touch anything else because that's how we spread the germs. Your participation is hands and feet to yourself and we don't want to touch each other or we will have those germs spread, yuck. Your success is going to the bathroom in a timely manner and keeping your space nice and clean. No need to hang out in the bathroom. Ugh, that's a dirty, dirty place. There's plenty of other spots for you to hang out with your friends. We cannot wait to meet you. Bye, fifth graders. <laughs> Hi Future Chargers, I am Miss Sparks, one of the sixth grade math teachers here at Lehman Middle School. We are so lucky that here at Lehman we get to provide each and every one of you with your own Chromebook to be used academically while you are here. But with that comes big responsibilities for each and every one of you. So to make sure that we are taking care of our Chromebooks, being responsible and maximizing our learning, I'm going to talk about how we can use Champs inside the classroom when using technology. So for C, conversation, we should be at a voice level zero for any independent work. Also, if you are working with a partner or small group, we should be at a voice level one so that only our group members or partner are able to hear us. H, help, if you need help on your Chromebook, raise your hand and wait patiently for your teacher to come and help. If you have a partner, you can also ask them for help as well. A, activity. Chromebooks can be used for so many different purposes, so you may be using it for independent work, partner work, or small group work. M, movement. To make sure we're taking care of our Chromebooks, make sure you're staying seated with your Chromebook on your desk. If you need to move, ask your teacher for permission. P, participation. Make sure you are staying focused, engaged, and on task with what the teacher assigns. And lastly, S for success, completing the assignment, activity, or research assigned by your teacher is how you can be successful when using your Chromebooks in the classroom. So once again, that is our champs for when we are using technology. We are so excited to see and have you in the building next year and have a wonder, wonderful summer. Take care. Hello, incoming sixth graders. My name is Ms. Foley, and I am a sixth grade math teacher at Lehman Middle School. 
we are very excited for you to start attending Lehman. Today, I'm going to talk about the expectations for the cafeteria. So C is for your conversation. Your voice level should be at a level two, which means it should be an inside voice while you're in the cafeteria. No yelling or screaming, and everyone at your table should be able to hear you, but nobody else should be able to hear you. So make sure you have an inside voice at a level two. H is for help. Raise your hand in the cafeteria if you need help or if you need to use the bathroom, and a supervising teacher will come and assist you. A is your activity, which you are eating lunch in the cafeteria. M is for movement. So you're not gonna be running around in the cafeteria or even walking around. You're going to get your lunch and you're going to sit down with your friends. If you need to leave for whatever reason, again, you need to raise your hand if you need help. Participation. Your hands and your feet and your food, should you should keep that to yourself. So please do not touch anyone else, especially now. Um, it's really important for you to keep all your body parts to yourself, including your food. Um, and S is for success, which means if you are following the champ's expectations, you are safely eating your food and you are cleaning up when the supervisors ask you to. Thank you. Okay, so what we have next are actually your science teachers. They have put together some quick tips and tricks for you at the middle school. The first teacher is Miss Brown, and here she is. Hello, incoming sixth graders. My name is Miss Brown, and I am one of the three science teachers for sixth grade. We're all giving you some advice on how to make your transition to Lehman Middle School the best it can be. My advice for you is what to do on a day that you might be kind of sad or maybe something happened with a friend and you don't know who to talk to. Well, you have so many new teachers here who are so excited to get to know you and who can help you whenever anything bad happens. We also have some counselors, Mrs. Moreno and Mrs. Phillips, who would love to talk to you as well. But whoever you decide to talk to, hopefully we can all make it better for you. All right, so that is Miss Brown. The next teacher that we have is Miss Gilliland, and here she is. Hello, future Lehman Chargers. I'm Miss Gilliland. I'm one of the science teachers in sixth grade. Today, I just wanted to tell you what you should do next year if you ever feel like you're confused about your homework. Well, you can always ask your teachers. All the sixth grade teachers would love to help you with your work. You can ask your classmates, and even during advisory time, which is near your lunchtime, you can ask either your advisory teacher for help or you can ask to go see your actual teacher for your class for help. Hope to see you guys next year. All right, our third science teacher is Mr. Brown. Here he is with his message for you. Hey, fifth graders, I'm Mr. Brown. I'm one of the sixth grade science teachers at Lehman Middle School, and you may have me next year for science. So one of the questions that you might have is what should you do if you cannot open your locker next year? Um, you're, you're going to have an advisory teacher that is responsible for giving you your locker and for helping you if any issues happen with that locker. So that advisory teacher will be happy to help you if you cannot get your locker open. One thing that we recommend is that you practice opening a lock before the first day of school so that when you get to school on that first day, you know exactly what to do with your locker and there are no problems. We are happy to help you when you need it. See you next year. All right, the next teacher is Miss Buckley. Here she is. Hi, my name is Miss Buckley, and some of you might see me in one or more of your classes because I co teach in math, science, and social studies. And I know what it's like changing from class to class every day. And that is something some of you are a little bit nervous about because it is a big change. And I'm here to tell you we are here to help you. There's always an adult in the hallway that you can ask. And also, don't be afraid to ask your teachers. We will not be mad because we know that this is very new to you. And also, we might be able to help you find a classmate that has a very similar schedule that you can go from class to class with and make a new friend. 
you may be surprised on how quickly you'll be able to find your classes within the first week of school. We are so excited to meet you and we look forward to having you. Have a great day. All right, and Mrs. Baker also has some words for you. Welcome Chargers, it's Mrs. Baker here. We are so excited to have you at the middle school next year. The best way that you can be the best Charger is to keep your old friends, make brand new friends, join clubs and sports, and just embrace the middle school experience. We are so excited to have you guys. See you next year. All right. So the next video that is put in here for you is from the seventh grade language arts teachers. And actually, this is one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about just a little bit before we take off for the day. The best way for you to prepare for sixth grade next year academically is to do some reading. So what I want you to do is think about genres and the seventh grade teachers put this video together for you that goes over some different examples of a genre. Uh, think about the genres, pick out your favorite one and read a book because that's always enjoyable, right? And then pick one of the other genres and read a book and then go back to your favorite and back and forth and back and forth. But really the best way to get ready for school next year is to read some books this summer. So let's take a peek at some of the suggestions that seventh grade language arts teachers have for you.
All right. So those are some genre examples from seventh grade English language arts teachers. Remember, read this summer. That's what I have for you today. These are just a couple of upcoming events that we have. On June 8th, we'll have a Zoom question and answer session. If you'd like to come to that with your parents, Ms. DeLuca and myself will be there. Maybe some of your teachers and other administrators will have a second session on June 9th at 1030 as well, in case your parents are working in the evenings and the morning works better for them. We will be having sixth grade camp in August. I will put out more information when I have that available to you and your parents. Teachers are signing up for that right now and getting it all prepared for you. I cannot wait with graders to make you part of our Charger family. Have a great summer.